welcome everyone to In the Kitchen, Conversations on IoT with Breadware. I'm your host, Carrie Siggins, CEO of Breadware. And today I am so excited to have my guest, Steve Burrows, who is all kinds of amazing. Uh, and I'll let him tell you a little bit about himself. So Steve, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. So Good. I'm all an right. en engineer. So everybody oh. knows that, right? Steve Burrows, CBE commander of the British Empire and professional engineer and engineers are boring so I'll try not to be boring oh you haven't been you haven't worked on boring topic uh, or boring um, uh, projects at all so maybe no. tell a little bit about your background so people can uh, understand uh, some of the cool things that you've done in your career sure so uh, I'm, I'm English as you can hear so uh, I've designed building projects around the world so I'm passionate about sports a Manchester United supporter uh, and so I spent a lot of my career designing stadiums so that included uh, the Bird's Nest Stadium in Beijing for the Olympic Games, Allianz Arena in Germany for the World Cup, uh, Stadium in Ukraine for Shakhtar Donetsk and many other projects uh, that I've done over my career uh, but most recently I've become very passionate about affordable housing and trying to find a way to uh, create buildings at much lower cost in a completely different way. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about that. So why don't you uh, give us a, a little bit of background on your interest in technology? Oh, so I've always been interested in technology. And that's not just uh, when we think about technology, I suppose people immediately go to their smartphones. Uh, but I've been interested in technology through the ages. Um, I actually uh, was part of a team that built uh, a Roman crane, which was the crane that built the Colosseum in Rome. So we uh, we found an image of it in the Vatican archives, and then we built it in uh, Lafayette, Louisiana, of all places. Um, and I'm passionate about how the Egyptians built the pyramids. And so technology through the ages fascinates me. And presently, you know, technology means something else to us. It relates to software and devices and IoT. Um, but for me, it's much broader than that. Yes, I agree with you. All right, well, let's keep it uh, in today's time uh, and talk a, little bit, <laughs> talk a little bit about your passion uh, about using technology to, technology to disrupt the construction industry. So tell us more about this and how you see IoT being part of this disruption. Yeah, I think, uh, well, the, you know, first of all, an engineer is a, a, a solution looking for a problem. And so today we have a big problem in affordable housing. So um, there's a lot of measures by which you measure the affordability index, which is, uh, you know, what's the average rental cost of a two bedroom, one bathroom department mm -hmm. to the average wage. Uh, and you can see trends over years. It's just getting more and more unaffordable and people are having to live further and further out of cities. And we can talk about sustainability in that context. Mm -hmm. And so I've been trying to think about how do we solve that problem? And I don't think it's a, it's a wicked hard problem and it's not an incremental problem. Uh, and it's not just about, uh, there's no silver bullet. You know, um, uh, off-site construction isn't by itself going to solve the cost of housing. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the problem has to be solved in a multitude of different ways. And, and so as far as IoT is concerned, uh, the way I see it is, um, think about it like this. If you could activate the connectors in Lego, such that you could make a system out of Lego blocks and you could build a building like Lego, i.e. anybody could do it and there was no way to do it wrong, then we could drive down the cost of housing and create a lot of jobs in the process. So I see technology, can, which is a connector system, as the route to solving the problem uh, that I'm focused on, which is affordable housing. I agree with you. It is a major issue, especially uh, living in a community that is uh, a mountain community and ba uh, built upon the service industry. And, you know, it's not even about affordable housing, it's attainable housing even. And so it yeah. is a major challenge. So how do we speed up this type of transformation that needs to happen? Well, I think, uh, the, you know, the way I like to think about things is that when you're looking at the future, which is what we're talking about, um, there are some things in the future that are going to be the same. No, you know, not many. We can't know the future. But we know, for example, with ourselves, we know we're going to need to sleep. And we know, we know we're going to need to eat and drink and go to the bathroom. Right? We know those things for sure. 
Um, and we know that there are some things around us that are fixed, like gravity isn't going to change, and buoyancy isn't going to change, um, and weather is still is always going to be a factor in the buildings we create. So, you know, I always like to start by saying there are some knowns, things that we have yeah. to know, but then there's a large series of unknowns. And the way I see it is that, um, you know, nature has solved the problems we're trying to solve. They've, they've, nature has solved these problems over billions of years. And technology allows us to connect things together much in the way that nature does. And I think we're going to have more reactive buildings. We're going to be able to sense what is going to occur ahead of it actually occurring and adapting to those things such that we don't create as much waste. And that might be waste material or waste energy or wasted time. And that's what IoT does for us. Um, and so my future of buildings, for example, is that uh, buildings won't, you know, at the moment you cool a building because they heat up when the sun comes through the windows uh, or the air is too hot outside and it affects the, the air inside the building. And I think we're going to be able to predict that and to be able to adapt the spaces such that they don't have such dramatic temperature changes in that case uh, at the time. And we're not trying to solve the problem downstream, we're solving the problem upstream. So for me, technology in this moment in history is about artificial intelligence. It's about data and then predictive analytics and doing something about that. And so right now, we see that as sensors. You know, if we can measure as many things as we possibly can, then we know that we will have information that we can do something with. But the future of IoT is predictive analytics and uh, artificial intelligence, I think. Yeah, I agree with you, I agree with you. Well, and this is a good segue into another passion of yours, which is the effects of climate change and, uh, and obviously building smarter buildings, uh, more efficient buildings are going to be a key factor in how humans can live comfortably as the planet continues to warm up. So how do you see IoT uh, impacting how humans can more positively affect uh, climate change? Yeah, I think, um, you know, what we've seen in COVID times, going living through this pandemic, um, we've seen a couple of things. One is how connected we all are to each other. And, uh, you know, for the first time, it's become tangible to every single person that we're, you know, tightly connected to each other. But what's also been amazing is, if you think about vaccines, if we all focus on something, we can solve it. So I see climate change as COVID times a thousand. You know, we're gonna be faced with major changes on the planet, and it's gonna come from things like um, water patterns are going to change and we all need to drink water every day. Food patterns are going to change. Um, and so I, I think about sustainability in a, in a sort of bigger picture. What does it mean for human civilization uh, when the planet changes? And as a result, the nature that we rely upon to live our lives uh, changes with it. And so I see that, that much as I was describing earlier, IoT gives us that opportunity to make predictions and to adapt to what is coming ahead. We, we, we can't change the fact that the sea level is going to rise, right? We can't change that. But we can predict the impact of that sea level rise, and we can protect ourselves against it as far as we reasonably can. And in some places, that might be abandoning cities uh, because we just can't economically protect against it. And what do we do when people abandon those places? Much like was done in the past, you know, the, the you know Rome uh, abandoned Ostia, uh, which is their port city, um, because the river changed direction. You know, this is not new, but we can predict these things now, and we can plan ahead, and hopefully make life better for people. Um, that's what I think is uh, how IoT is going to help us with sustainability, which is you know, enduring life on this planet, ultimately, that's the purpose of uh, sustainability. And the magic question, do you think we're doing enough right now in this moment, uh, especially with the technology that we already have at our fingertips? You know, I think COVID is a blessing in disguise. Um, uh, I, I really don't think that we've been doing enough. I don't think that um, 
that pol politicians have really taken it seriously enough because it takes a planet to solve the climate mm -hmm. crisis. And we've tried to do it, you know, with with um, you know wealthy nations and uh, imposing rules on nations that really can't afford that. You know, they're trying to find a way out of poverty. Um, but what we now see is that we're you know connected together, and I think everybody has become focused and is sort of putting these two things together, saying, well, you know, if a pandemic can have this much impact on planet Earth, um, what is the changing climate going to have? So I feel hopeful about it. Um, and uh, have, we, have we done enough so far? No, not at all. But, but will that change? Yeah, I'd like to believe so. And I want to be part of that. You know, I think uh, it's the greatest time in history to be an engineer. And I'm super excited about what we're going to be able to do and how we're going to do it. Yeah. All right. And then the, the magic question, the second magic question I have is if you could give one piece of advice to companies looking to use technology and IoT enabled devices to solve some of these uh, huge challenges that the world is facing, uh, what would what would that advice be? Yeah, I think you've got I think you've got to look at, um, at, at your customers. Right. You've got to look at how not how technology can benefit you, but how technology can benefit your customers. And I know that's a really obvious thing, but but you know, let me just pick something like go back to affordable housing. You know, what what we want when we live in 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 a housing in an urban environment, what do we want? We want to be able to have to feel safe. We want to be able to have a, a good night's sleep, uh, and we want to be able to interact with other people socially. And technology needs to focus on those things. And uh, and when it does. Um, then people will live better lives. When people live better and happier lives and they rely on the technology to do that, then it becomes sticky and they want to use more of it. And, uh, and right now, I think we have technology for technology's sake and we need to focus more on how is it improving the human experience. Uh, and that's not just buying food easier or transport easier. It's about, you know, how do you get a better night's sleep? Um, and, and how can technology help you to do that? Um, and those problems might be related to, you know, acoustics or lighting or, or you know, the, the interface between humans, between biology and technology is where we're going to see the greatest development, I believe. Um, not just in health. We're going to see a lot of healthcare wearables and the doctor knowing your health issues before you know them. Um, yeah, of course. But I also think that this connection with, with biology, with you know what is what is actually makes you happy, um, is ultimately where technology can benefit humanity. Yeah, I agree with you, and I love the tie to understanding your customers. And while it seems like it's obvious, a lot of times you're right. We create technology for technology's sake, and not really think about how is this going to impact our customers, and is it something that's really needed that's going to improve life, or is it going to be just another thing yet to buy uh, and discard, which I think is part of our problem. So uh, I think that was a, a a fantastic answer, and I completely agree with you. Yeah, actually, actually, I think you know we've made a lot of mistakes in the past. If you think, for example, yeah. you know we've created. A tremendous uh, plastic mountain um, out of technology, and um, and as a result, we've created a huge amount of damage. And so, you know, for me, uh, materials are super important. And I think at the moment, you know, technology materials um, are not sustainable, and uh, we need to we need to solve that problem, you know, particularly. Um, and we also need to focus on how do we deal with waste. You know, how do we create much more of a circular economy? and avoid um, that all of this embodied energy that we put into things uh, doesn't end up in landfill. So, you know, everything is connected because, you know, that impacts the food chain and then, you know, the climate yeah. changes, you know, we, we realize that we're all connected to each other and we're all connected to nature and technology needs to make this sustainable. And that's ultimately the goal. Well, this has been such an inspiring interview. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, how can people find you? Oh, I'm super easy to find. So uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. That's probably the easiest place. But if you just Google Steve Burrows CBE or Steve Burrows Engineer, uh, you'll find uh, TV shows, uh, links to my email addresses, my telephone number. Uh, if you can't find me, you mustn't have the internet.
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I, I really appreciate you coming on uh, on the show today. Thank you so much. Uh, I, as always, I enjoy our conversations. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Nice to see you. All right. Thanks, everybody.